Welcome. This is the 14th of April. It's Documentation Office Hours. Thanks for joining. Uh, topics that I've got on the list include Google Summer of Code. Awesome. Oh, it's already already here, right? So let's just move it up. Yeah. Uh, alternate ways to handle stale pull requests that was discussed in Docs Office Hours Europe about 12 hours ago that I'd like to review as possible ideas and not, nothing we're wanting to take action on, but I think worth discussing. Yep. End of life notifications in Jenkins Core that Chris, I would like to review it with you. I reviewed it earlier with, with Alex Brandis in Office Hours Europe and yep. wanted to see if what you thought of this idea. And okay. early end of life of Cent for CentOS 7 gets a new topic because there was just recently an article. Anything oh. else you want to add to the list, Chris? Mm, no, it looks good. Okay, great. So let's take Google Summer of Code first. Okay. Any specific things you want there, Chris, other than Mark? Continue reviews. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm continuing reviewing too. Oh, good. Okay, Chris. Continuing to review proposals. Good. And we have, All right. Uh, and we just have one more mentor joined, uh, which is a returnee because is Yiming. Oh, um, good. Yes. Okay, spell it correctly. X I M I N G. Uh, y Y Y. -Y -Y. Oh, y Yiming. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Please. And it was Yiming Gong, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Joined as a mentor as a returning. Yep. Uh, re returning after being a contributor last year, right? He was a, on the project last year with, it was uh, last year's yeah. uh, Jenkins File Runner project. Yep, that's correct. Great, excellent. All right, so anything else that you wanted to highlight there, Chris? Um. I think we are doing okay progress wise, but may need to chase some of the mentors for the evaluations. Okay. Yeah. And that's, I think that's reasonable. I think so, um, yeah. Now, I did receive a uh, an email from, so Mark, Mark, uh, Fram, and I forget who the other one was. And one other received reminders okay. from John Mark today. Uh, I, I assume you were copied as well. So yeah. um, we'll meet. In my case, it will probably be likely early next week okay. to, to discuss our, observ our observations as a smaller group. Okay. And then we'll share with with the uh, the org admins, of course. Okay. Great. Anything else? Mm, I think maybe not. Okay. Things are more sensitive. All right. Good. Thank you. Okay. On next topic, then, alternate ways to handle stale documentation pull, pull requests. So mm -hmm. last week, there was a, a question from, I think it was from, oh, who was it? I forget. But one of our attendees, oh, Mukul, Mukul Kumar, Kumar asked last week, hey, why don't we do what, uh, why don't we just run Stalebot? Yeah, we can. And well, the, but, there, but there are those of us who, like me, who have pretty strong opinions. No, I'm not willing to do stale lot. Okay. But we discussed, okay, what's the, what's the, what's, what are the concerns? What are the reasons for that? And why would we care? And that for me was a useful discussion. So yeah, the okay. point was, there are several different reasons a pull request can go stale, right? If yeah. it's stale because it's not valuable, we just close it. And, yeah. and there we had an example just today where Kevin Kevin Martins had asked three or four times over the course of several weeks for a submitter to correct 
some okay. mistakes in the in the content they were trying to submit. No response. Yeah. They had just stopped yeah. being involved. And okay. Kevin finally said, look, what you're submitting is not valuable enough for me to complete the work myself. Okay. Uh, we're going to close it. Okay. So that that was that's a very reasonable thing. However, yeah. we've got some that are migrating useful information from old old locations like the old Jenkins wiki. Okay. But it's not good enough to be placed onto Jenkins.io yet because it's got a number of inaccuracies because of how old the information is. Oh, okay. I see. And and we talked about okay, we could take that old pull request and close it and create an issue to track the content. Uh, after talking with Alex Brandis, he said, well, but that's not how Jenkins Core does it. What Jenkins Core does is they just label it stalled and accept okay. that it's okay that it's open. It's just okay. not progressing. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I kind of like the Jenkins Core like workflow for handling this. Good. Well, and, and that was what Kevin felt as well was that, okay, let's, let's just admit it's okay that we have open pull requests, but yeah. we're going to mark them as stalled because stalled is a way of at least telling us, hey, this thing is not getting progress. And we could then, we can then invite new contributors mm -hmm. to help with some of the stalled pull requests. Now, some yeah. of them require expert level skills and telling a new contributor to go work on this is a recipe for a failure. But yeah. if it is relatively straightforward, what needs to be done, then we could we could consider, hey, look at a stalled pull request that we've marked as good for a new contributor. Okay. And let's yeah. see, what is that? It's called um, good first issue. First issue, yeah. So does that sound reasonable to you, Chris? I think so, yeah. That will work well. Okay, good. So so we we already have that label. Okay. And we we will use it. We okay. already have the the stalled label. Kevin checked earlier today and we'll use it. And then we have the option to mark them as good first issue. Okay. That way at least we've flagged, hey, these things are not making progress. Okay. Great. Yep. All right. So next topic, and this one was one I think I want I want some, this is a chance for some design feedback or some concept feedback. Okay. So Jenkins has runs on platforms that where we officially declare that we only support the platform if the upstream provider also sorts, supports the platform. Therefore, Ubuntu 18, as an example, will okay. reach end of life May 31st, 2023. Okay. That's when the, the upstream vendor says, we will no longer support it to the open source community. You have to purchase okay. an extended support contract. You have to pay them money in order to get support for Ubuntu 18 after okay. May 31. Yeah. And at that point, the Jenkins project says it is unsupported for Jenkins, but we okay. have no way of notifying people that it is unsupported and they're running on an unsupported platform. Yeah. So in the past, when we said, hey, Java 8 is going to be unsupported, we used a thing called an administrative monitor. Mm -hmm. And that administrative monitor pops up to the Jenkins administrator and says, you are um, in this case, it says you are it would say you are running Java 8. Java 8 will be end of life as of this date. You'll have to use Java 11. Okay. And we want to use a similar, my proposal is let's use a similar technique here, but make it a little more general purpose. Okay. So the idea is that we create, define a, and I started with a directory, and now I think it could be as simple as we define a, uh, a collection of, let's see, how do we say it? A collection of conditions and messages related to those conditions. Okay. Uh, for instance, if the file 
slash etc slash os dash release matches mm -hmm. or has content that matches dot star ubuntu dot star 1804 okay then display then okay then if it is before may 31 2023 display okay. you are about to end of you you are you are end of life uh what's the date end of life 31 may blah 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 okay if it is after May 31, display, you know, let's, okay, I'm going to say this really harsh. That's not how we would phrase it, but life will end. Okay. And, <laughs> right. And now it's life has ended. Okay. As of 31 May. And it's it's certainly there's better phrasing than that, but yeah. but the notion is give two different messages, and this way we do this admin monitor, and it says this Jenkins release knows to check this thing, and okay. we can now add additional if the file slash etc red hat dash release has content that matches um dot star seven you know and etc then we so the idea being we we create these a data file one or more data files that okay. define these conditions and the messages the the condition so let's see let's talk about the attributes attributes okay. inside this data file are the file name okay whose content is being matched. Okay. The match pattern. Check the date, the effective date of the end of life. Okay. The message before the effective date and the message after the <laughs> after the effective date okay makes sense yeah so the idea then is okay each jenkins release can say here are the things that that are the admin monitors that will be checking with this jenkins release to announce to people that they are on some obsolete platform and this would let us do things like these Linux releases, those are pretty easy because they identify by files. Yeah. It also lets us do, whoops, it allows us to end of life container images. Yeah. We would place a an end of life marker in the container image and release the release the image. Okay. So with that end of life marker file and release the image with a matching Jenkins release. Okay. That refers that uses that marker file for a notice. Okay. So, for instance, we have a container called the Blue Ocean Container. Yeah. We have another one that is the Windows Controller Container, where the platform SIG has been watching the usage and seeing that there just aren't many people running the Windows con the control the Jenkins controller on Windows in Docker. And okay. let's end of life. And we just tell people by doing this that this thing is now end of life. Okay. Does that seem reasonable? I think so, yeah. 
any guidance you want to offer on, hey, it would be better if we did it this way or that way? Mm, no, not really, no. Okay, good. All right, well, so, well, go ahead. I think there's sufficient. Excellent. Thank you. So I'll, I've, uh, my next steps then here is Mark propose either a Jenkins enhancement proposal or a pull request to Jenkins core mm -hmm. with the idea. I'm, and now that we've been through these iterations enough times, mm -hmm. I think this may even be worth just doing a pull request rather than bothering with the Jenkins enhancement proposal process, because yeah. the idea seems sensible enough. Let's just, let's just do it. Yeah. Great. All right. Any other th suggestions you want to offer on that one? Mm, no. Okay. All right. Next topic then early end of life for CentOS 7 in the Jenkins project. So this is another proposal or idea that's been on my mind that just got a new, a new additional input for it or a new additional note. A, a rather famous writer in the open source community, Stephen Von Nichols, noted that um, there are other vendors who are doing an early end of life for CentOS 7 support as well. Right. The, the vendor cPanel, where is it? Here we go. cPanel will block new installations in their upcoming release. Oh, has already blocked it. So in March, they blocked it. Oh, yeah, because it's April. Okay. So, so for me, this is tempts me to say, you know what, we should do the same. We should do something similar where we declare that we're ending life for CentOS 7 in particular because this is the one that's that's that for me is the most valuable thing, which is that Docker, the, the CentOS 7 container images, are already unsupported by their upstream maintainers. Okay. So what that means is the Jenkins container images based on them mm -hmm. already are orphans. Okay. Okay. Makes because sense. the upstream maintainers aren't taking care any longer. Yeah. The CentOS 7. 7 system D uh, based RPM installer from Jenkins does not work. Whoops. Okay. It's and and Basil Crow who who did the implementation of it says not supported. So okay. not supported. Um, and let's see, there was one other non, oh, yeah, I, I remember what it was, CentOS 7, open SSH 7.4 is missing key features. Needed by the Git plugin. Right. And CentOS 7 Git 1.8 is missing 40 plus revisions of, Jen of Git features uh, that the Git plugin needs. And doesn't support things like sparse checkout, doesn't, if I remember it, reliably support shallow checkout. There are all sorts of flaws and failures in CentOS 7. The version of Git is so old because the current version is current is 2.40.0. If you can imagine, there have been over 40 releases since that thing. And here the current version, current version is like 9.0 or 9.2. So this thing is really ancient. Okay. That any objection from you or any insight you want to offer there, Chris? No objection. 
Okay. Those were the topics I had for today. Anything else we need to discuss today? Mm, not really. Don't think so. Okay. Let's call an oh, end and I'm going to go back to reviewing Google Summer of Code. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll see you next Thanks, week. Thanks, Chris. See you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.